Apple makes 11th hour deals with record labels, a town with no Wi-Fi, and find out why business insider Steve Kovac thinks everyone in the world should switch to Facebook Messenger. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 366 for Wednesday, June 24th, 2015. This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships snacks that you crave right to your door with over 100 flavors to choose from, like mini Belgian waffles. You'll never get bored of snacking again. Try NatureBox at naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Welcome. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you to Mike Elgin for filling in for me yesterday. I had a lovely day off. Now let's get to today's big news. Only six days left until Apple launches their new music streaming service. Late yesterday, Billboard magazine reported that at the 11th hour, Apple has inked deals with thousands of independent record companies around the world to allow customers to stream their music for free for the first three months and for $9.99 a month after that. This comes on the heels of news last week that Apple had changed their minds and decided that they would pay rights to music owners during, that they would not pay rights, that they would pay rights to the music owners during the three month free trial period offered to subscribers. There was a lot of back and forth last week. Joining us today to talk about this back and forth is Steve Kovac, senior editor at Business Insider. Welcome, Steve. Hey, thanks for having me back. So last week, everyone was talking about how Taylor Swift convinced Apple to alter their policy. Uh, why do you think they really changed course? Well, I think it that did have an influence in it, but uh, it before it could spin out of control, I guess, with someone so influential like Taylor Swift, uh, they figured they'd just nip this thing in the bud. And, and since they're Apple and they're the leader in so many things and people put them under such a critical uh, lens, like every move they make, um, why not just set the example? They have the money. It's it's just nothing to them. So um, just have some goodwill and avoid some bad PR um, surrounding this big launch. I mean, this is a major product for them. Right. And if you're not a music owner, uh, if you're just a music listener, if you don't make music or you're not a music rights owner, nothing really changed last week. I and mean, we still won't have to pay for the free first three months. Um, does this news really affect the Apple Music subscriber at all? I don't think so. I mean... If you look at what all these services offer, it, essentially it's the same thing. Spotify, RDO, Apple, soon Apple Music. They're essentially the same library. Uh, you know, one service might have an exclusive that the other doesn't have. But I mean, just like one artist holding out or a handful of artists holding out isn't going to destroy or make any of these services just totally collapse. There's, it's, it's a rental service. You're paying 10 bucks a month not to keep this music, but you get... 30 million songs, uh, depending on which service you use, for 10 bucks a month on demand. That's pretty cool. So even if Taylor Swift 1989 isn't on it or a handful of indie artists aren't on it, you're still getting a tremendous value out of these services. And that's why it's the biggest growth area uh, in the music industry right now, because it, it is very useful and helpful. Um, and so at the end of the day, it's not going to really matter. It's not going to make Apple Music better than Spotify or Spotify better than Apple Music or RDO better or whatever. It's at the end of the day, they're all pretty much on par with each other. And it's it's just going to be up to preference on things like app design and the devices you use. Well, what about the radio that uh, Apple has been pushing at their keynote? They were talking about, you know, they had these DJs that they'd hired and they really wanted to go back to the time that you, you know, listened to the radio and heard a DJ and appreciated what he said and how he introduced the music or she. Uh, do you think that will change anything? Yeah, well, they're really marketing that as their key differentiator, but at the same time, that's going to be free even if you don't pay that 10 bucks a month. It's going to be ad-supported. Uh, there aren't going to be like commercials, but you know, they'll say something like brought to you by AT&T or something in the middle of it, um, the DJ will. But it's it that's anybody can access uh, the Beats 1 radio and the other um, – genre-based radio stations, uh, and those are all going to be curated by humans. So again, I don't know if that's going to be a big differentiator and make people suddenly want to switch from Spotify to Apple Music. But at the same time, I mean, Apple Music is going to be baked into every iPhone sold, and they sell tens of millions every quarter. So uh, they have a key advantage there where people have to actively go out and find Spotify. Well, you also say that this is something that might encourage people to try music streaming for the first time. I mean, maybe they don't even use Spotify. Right. So Apple Music's going to be baked into uh, millions and millions of Apple devices from day one. You know, it's that same music app that people are already using to listen to their downloaded music or their music they ripped from CDs um, from iTunes. And so 
it's already just going to be a separate tab on there. So that might entice people. There's a, that's a huge advantage to Apple. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily make something like Apple Music better than the alternative. But it's it's a great uh opportunity for apple to grab all these people who maybe haven't tried music streaming and they get that three months are free that's a great deal that's you know 30 million songs for three months unlimited uh offline listening to um that's a very tempting offer to at least try for a little bit and then now that the artists are getting paid for it the artists are probably pretty happy that you know millions of people could potentially be listening to their songs during that period and they're getting paid for it yeah, I'm always surprised at how many, how few people really take advantage of these streaming services. I went on vacation this weekend with a, a bunch of families and, you know, the people attaching their phone to whatever Bluetooth speaker, they were all listening to ad-supported uh, Pandora, which I was yeah. just like, really? Like, are we in the dark ages? You know, can, you can't even pay Pandora's for Pandora? Huge, yeah, it, it is. And so, um, you know, I mean, some people don't even know that there are other options out there. I feel sorry for those people. <laughs> But I think if anyone is going to get the word out, it's going to be Apple because, like you said, it's going to be baked into our iPhones, which everyone has. Definitely. So the other big news today is that in select countries, you can use Facebook Messenger even if you're not a Facebook user. Now, I thought everyone in the world except my husband was on Facebook, but this is not true. There are people that, that might want to use Facebook Messenger and not Facebook. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity, you know, for people who are you know, there there are some holdouts like your husband, I guess, who just don't want to use Facebook. But uh, Messenger is is next to uh, next to Facebook itself. That's the biggest app for Facebook. Uh, you know, they kind of forced everyone to start using Messenger um, over the last year, year and a half or so. Um, but it's been working. It's a great app. And, you know, I wish there was just some way to convert everyone from iMessage to Facebook Messenger because iMessage is just such a disaster still. It doesn't sync with all your devices the way they t say it can. Um, often, you know, anecdotally, I can say like it splits my contacts up and sometimes, you know, someone will text me from, it'll say their name, but sometimes they'll say their email address and sometimes they'll just say their number. Um, and, you know, it'll look different on my Mac than it looks on my iPad and so forth. Whereas Facebook Messenger, I've never had a problem with that. It, it's a great app. It, it syncs perfectly with Facebook. You just type in the, your friend's name and boom, you got it. And now it's great because it ties into your phone number. So even if someone doesn't have Facebook for some reason, which I, I can't think of a soul I know personally who doesn't, but just let's say they don't, uh, it makes it that much easier to add them and, and reach out to them uh, through Facebook Messenger. It's, it's a good move for them. It's very much like WhatsApp, which they already own, and that's tied to your phone number, not Facebook. Well, why, why do they, um, if they're so similar, why, why do they have both? That's WhatsApp was a potential threat. I mean, if you want to go back to why they bought WhatsApp, um, was that two years ago now? I don't even remember. Um, however many years ago it was when they bought WhatsApp, um, you know, that was growing faster than Facebook Messenger at the time. So that was kind of like eliminating a threat. Well, so they kind of run it as a side business. It, I'd be shocked if it ever sort of deeply integrated with Facebook Messenger. Um, but at the same time, Facebook Messenger, I forget what the last numbers are, but it's approaching a billion users. Um, it'll probably get there pretty soon. And with updates like this, um, that's that's going to be big for them. So you think it's just more reliable. It makes sense. You like having the connection to the, the person's face. I mean, that, that's what I like. It, you know, you, you can actually feel like you're talking to them more because you see their face as opposed to then you have, if in your context, you have to just put everybody in there yourself. Uh, so you feel like it's superior to iMessage. Or yeah, it's not just the there. face thing. I mean, it's also they're doing really cool stuff with letting third parties integrate with it, which you can't necessarily do with iMessage. So, you know, there's like Giphy, you can send like little gifts and uh, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, now they have payments uh, built into it in some areas, and that's really cool. So it's a Venmo killer in a sense. Um, and they're kind of building in all these like little quick social interaction uh, third party applications or letting people build those in um, that just makes it superior. And just the uh, to iMessage and just the fact that it works so well across whatever platform or device or screen you're looking at. Um, I just wish we had some way to train people to start using it instead of iMessage. Would well, you have privacy issues with it at all? No, I mean, I, I think I tweeted something about this today and, and, you know, I got some tweets, well, Facebook's going to read all your messages and so forth. And no, of course they're not going to do that. And they're not going to start showing you ads for the stuff you're talking about. Uh, and if they do somehow figure out how to monetize it that way, I guarantee you Mark Zuckerberg is not going to be personally reading every message and deciding what ad to show. It's going to be all algorithmically based, just like it is uh, when you see ads on Facebook. So 
that I, I would take off the tinfoil hat on that one. Okay. Well, Steve, thank you so much. Steve Kovac is the senior editor at Business Insider. Uh, are you working on anything now that you can talk about? God, nope. Can't talk about it. <laughs> so the- I'm working on something. No, I can't talk about it. Wait three or four weeks and I can. Okay. Well, the stuff that you have, you're still writing a little bit and you're tweeting out a lot of the great Business Insider stories. Uh, so that can all be found at Business Insider. And uh, you are Steve Kovac at Twitter, right? Is that your Twitter yeah, handle? Yeah, Steve Kovac. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care. Coming up, Android phones get office and an algorithm that finds naked people. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now at NatureBox, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks and just pay $2 for the shipping. You know you're going to snack, and when you do, you want it to be worth it. Something that's tasty and satisfying but doesn't make you feel guilty afterwards. What you need are snacks from NatureBox. Choose over one, choose from over 100 healthy and crave-worthy options to be delivered right to your door. All their snacks are made with zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. Zero grams trans fats and no high fructose corn syrup. And best of all, they taste amazing. And they're so much better for you than the other snack options out there. So next time you're hungry, grab strawberry lemonade fruit stars or sweet and salt salty nut medley and get smart about snacking. Right now, if you go to naturebox.com slash twit, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks delivered right to your door. What are you waiting for? Go to naturebox.com slash twit to start your trial today. And we thank Naturebox for their support of tech news tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The Guardian reports that a town in West Virginia that banned Wi-Fi is getting more than it bargained for. The town of Green Bank Green Bank, nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains, is home to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, which houses telescopes so sensitive that the town prohibits phones, TVs, and radios in the entire town. The area is known as the National Radio Quiet Zone because the deluge of signals from our devices disrupt interstellar messages that the observatory is listening for. Now, if that sounds like a quiet place to settle down, it is. But recently, it's also become a haven for the electrosensitive, those people who are convinced that Wi-Fi, radio waves, and other type of electromagnetic radiation are slowly and quietly killing us all. Even though no scientific study has proven that electrosensitivity exists and the World Health Organization says it's not clear that electromagnetic hypersensitivity creates any real medical problems, people fleeing Wi-Fi have flocked to the town of Green Bank and some residents are not pleased with the demand being made on this quiet town. The story in The Garden Guardian is a great read, so check it out and let me know what you think. Do you believe we can get sick from Wi-Fi? Email me at megan at twit.tv to let me know. Microsoft Office for Android phones came out today. That includes Word, Excel, and PowerPoint apps for phones running the Android operating system. Office apps have been available on Android tablets since January. The apps for your phone are free as long as you have a Microsoft account, which is also free. And finally, Wired reports that a company has developed an algorithm that finds out who's naked on the internet. Before you get any ideas, the app is intended to automate the task of determining whether a website is family friendly or not. Wired says the technology is lucrative because even though the mantra sex sells is still true, it's also now true that keeping it away from the kitties sells also. Thanks for watching the show or listening to it or both. We love feedback. Richard Polk recently wrote in, your program is always good, but I found Friday, June 12th, 2015 to be especially good. The conversation with Stacey Higginbotham was excellent. The fact that you had a mature conversation that average people could appreciate was appreciated. Thanks, Richard. I also appreciate that. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Just go to twit.tv and click on the live button or go to live.twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.